So today I'm coming back to you with shrimp and grits. We are on episode eight of In the Kitchen with Midwest Foodies Kitchen. And I am Venetia, aka Vanille, whichever one you want to call, whichever one is easier to remember. But if I want you to remember anything, that's the shrimp and grits recipe. Yes, today I am cooking shrimp and grits. It's a down south southern favorite. It's a Chicago favorite. And it is by far a modern day favorite. This is a recipe that will never get old. This is a recipe that I'm sure they make all across the world. If they don't, you know what? Come to Chicago. Come to the Midwest Foodies Kitchen and give it a try, okay? I will be selling this soon, okay? Everyone needs to get their mouth on this cuisine. Okay, I've been to several different restaurants and by far, I have the best shrimp and grits recipe, okay? I use a creamy sauce that goes on top of my shrimp and on top of the creamiest grits that I put American cheese in as well as mozzarella cheese. If I had some Gouda here, I would put a little bit of Gouda too because that Gouda gives a very pungent, very savory flavor along with the creamy, sweet American cheese. Um, But anyway... Yeah, for the sauce, I use some red bell pepper. I use, I use some oregano. Anywho, join me in a second, right over here, right over here, to catch this Midwest Foodies Kitchen special. Okay, get your boil on your water, add your salt. This is for your grits. My grandmother always said, add salt to your grits. You don't want them tasting too fresh. You want that seasoning on them. Next, I use a half a bag of shrimp. That's because I love my protein and why not? Next, I cut up one third of a red bell pepper and I dice it really small. You don't wanna use any other color bell pepper because this red bell pepper gives the flavor that you want. It's the flavor of the century. Next, you wanna cut a shallot and you want equal parts shallot as you had red bell pepper, and you want them to be cut in the same size. Next, I use a half aroma tomato, and I use aroma tomato specifically because it's not too soft and it has that firmness that I like. Next, you want a half tablespoon of butter. You add your two veggies along with a half a tablespoon of minced garlic, cover that up. Next, you wanna add your five minute grits to your water. Stir it a little bit, cover it up. Next, add your shrimp. Once your vegetables are nice and soft and fluorescent, add a half teaspoon of Himalayan salt or regular salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, and a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper, of course. I love the spice. Half teaspoon of oregano. Oregano goes perfect with shrimp. Just an FYI, you add a half of lemon juice or squeeze half of that lemon into there and you see the juice that is already made. There's so much seasoning in this and my secret weapon is heavy whipping cream to finish the sauce up. This makes the perfect sauce to go over your grits. I'll let that simmer for another maybe five minutes. Now you wanna work on your grits, stir them. Add one slice of American cheese. This is about one fourth cups of grits and I used a half cup of water by the way. Um, you want one fourth cup of mozzarella cheese and you stir that really well a half tablespoon of butter, stir it up, and this is where the creaminess comes from. Look at how creamy that is. Your grits should be the texture of mashed potatoes. You should have no gritty grains in those grits. Next, check on your shrimp and your sauce. You add your aroma tomatoes to them at the end once they're done cooking. You don't want your tomatoes to get mushy and soft. Next, you want to plate your grits. Never just mix your shrimp and grits together. Who does that? It always goes over the shrimp and you eat it like that the entire time. You never mix it in, unless you're some type of alien from another planet. 
look at that dial-up. I add one tablespoon of sugar because I'm a sugar grit eating girl from Chicago. Add your shrimp and sauce on top. Make sure you lay it really pretty because you know what they say, the gooder the food looks, the gooder the food tastes. Yes, I did say gooder. I know that's not a word. You know it's good when you try to scrape every little bit out of the pan. I wanted all of that sauce, all of it. I made it, I know it tastes delightful. So I'm gonna use it all. And let me tell you, I think that you should skip the restaurant this week and make this for your family, for your husband, for your wife, for whoever. I promise you, you will not regret it. You'll save money and you're gonna have a delicious plate. I love it. So stay tuned. I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite YouTubers, Tasha K and Cardi B and their little beef and lawsuit. Hey foodies, welcome back. I told you all that today would be a very special episode. Um, you all have not had any, any of my reactions to my food. And of course, I'm gonna eat this amazing shrimp and grits for you all and talk about a couple things. Um, for one, well, maybe this will be the, the only topic today, but I wanna talk about Tasha K, whom I absolutely love. I started watching her a couple years ago back when she was covering the R. Kelly situation before um the lifetime special came out about him surviving r kelly she was talking to all of the people who were saying he gave them herpes and he was doing all of those crazy things to him and that made me really like mess with her because i realized she had some real plugs and connections okay and she wanted to expose the nastiness that was happening out there in atlanta and in chicago and in la um with this particular uh, rapper because there were so many girls so big ups to her Anyway, she has she's a no holds bar blogger here on YouTube and she says what she says and she tells it how it is and she is a Pisces, my Pisces sister. I am a Pisces as well. Okay, so I'm um here to talk about her and Cardi B though. Okay, so they've been going through this lawsuit and it's been known from Cardi B fans to Tasha K fans that they've been beefing. Let me take a, a taste of my food. Mmm. It actually got kind of cold. Still delicious. Mmm. Oh, it's so spicy. Okay. But, yeah. What's crazy is Cardi B filed a lawsuit against Sasha K. Because Sasha K said that she was a drug abusing herpes drug abuser. And Cardi B got pretty mad about it and filed a lawsuit and Tasha K, a defamation lawsuit and Tasha K came back and did a countersuit for $3 million. This is back in 2019. But yeah, the case, the judge just dismissed the case, counter, uh, Tasha K's counter lawsuit mm. for a lack of evidence. They're saying that Tasha K failed to prove that cardi b herself threatened her meaning other people allegedly could have threatened her on cardi b's group or team camp whatever you call it they may have but cardi b didn't and so allegedly and so hey i'm just wishing tasha the best in that situation because i mean she's entertaining us it's not that serious people say all types of stuff about celebrities but to be honest that didn't hold much weight like tasha k tells a lot of jokes like she's it's, it's funny you're in the spotlight like what do you expect like things like that do happen like we don't believe cardi b you have herpes and you know i hope that they can resolve this they both have children two kids that they have to take care of they both have families so i'm wishing them both the best and i'm hoping that this is a learning lesson for them but at the same time the media says all types of stuff about Cardi B. And then she even put herself out there like that. Like her husband told her to give him a blowjob. I saw an Instagram um, video asking her to suck him up. I was like, what? Like, 
okay what type of husband does this but you know i guess she felt like you know saying that she had herpes allegedly was you know over the top maybe she should um file defamation on her husband for asking her to suck his on camera on instagram live so i don't know where he was getting at with that but that sounds like a messy ass relationship but um let's talk about this fool i don't have my my um i don't have my gravy my um uh, bacon in here but let me tell you baby this is delicious even without it that break that bacon just takes it to a whole nother level it's okay not to have a ba the bacon for some of my um non-pork eaters it's perfectly fine like this i love sauces so of course i made a sauce with mine you don't want to skimp out on the um tomatoes the tomatoes give that refreshing taste tomato -y flavor mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. this is so good i don't know anyone who makes shrimp and grits better than this i just don't i want i'm gonna challenge somebody y'all better not use my recipe don't try to use my recipe against me that's all i can say now something so good you really want to talk mm. Mm -mm -mm. so good but y'all know i can't eat that much so i'm gonna slow down because i'm getting really full right now take this last bite you know grits are really heavy i'm gonna come back to this because i definitely have to finish it i need my protein for the day since i have the carbs i want to balance it out mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. i'm sorry y'all mm -mm -mm. <laughs> One of my lovely subscribers suggested that I become pescatarian. And to be honest, I'm already almost like a pescatarian. I never really eat a lot of beef. Um, I do eat bacon. And sometimes every now and then ribs. But outside of that, I don't eat a lot of pork. Um, but oh my God, this was delicious. Um yeah so that's it i just wanted to come and let you all know everything is all good the midwest foodies kitchen is here with our series new series in the kitchen with midwest foodies kitchen thanks for watching don't forget to like hit the bell and comment please your comments are so important to me i look forward to coming to you with more videos thanks for watching i hope you make this lovely recipe and tell me all about it bye So today we decided to go to Yasa's African restaurant in Chicago on the south side in a Bronzeville neighborhood, which is a historically black neighborhood. I just wanted to show you guys the front and the inside a little bit. So here we go. Now here's the food that we bought. This is everything that it came in. I've done nothing but open it and we have three or two entrees and two appetizers. And so let's dig in all right hey guys welcome back to midwest foodies kitchen and i am vanille aka venetia you know i go by many monikers chanel aka Erin. what up what up what up what up, what up? yes yeah, so we are <sighs> back we have been gone for what weeks y'all we're sorry but we've been busy we've been traveling we've been out here you know making our money and not showing y'all all the great things that we have eaten but today, not only do we have shots of Hennessy to start us off, but we have some African food from none other 
Yasa African restaurant here in Chicago. This is our first time ever trying African food and we are here to let you all know exactly how this goes. So without further ado, we're gonna take our shots. So toast. Cheers. Cheers good to life. good life, good food, and many more videos and being back with you all. So here. Ah, woo, that was good. Yes, so I guess we should start. I don't think we have our utensils yet, but there's a couple over there. Oh, yes. Just two plastic forks. Um, um, yeah, I don't think I want to eat with a spoon. Um, I guess you're supposed to kind of eat this with your hands, too. <laughs> but um, I really don't know if I want to do that. But I do want to show you all what we got. So uh, right here, we have some fufu. Okay, this is going to be our first time. We're super excited about this. Um, here we got some egg rolls and these egg rolls come with like shrimp, chicken, mm. vegetables, and ground beef. Mm. And yeah, that's, that's different, different right there. Um, what does I have? I got, I got something called mafe, which is, I, I believe there's lamb in here, peanut butter, tomato paste, and a bunch of vegetables. I'm wondering how this is going to taste. This, this is pretty darn interesting. I had ordered the Yafa. Um, Yafa fish, but uh, Yasa fish, W, uh, W, Y A S S A fish. But of course, that didn't happen. They didn't have the fish. I was bummed about that. So I settled for this, which we were going to get anyway. Um, I just wanted to have a bigger feast to show you all. And Chanel got the uh, brochet, bro brochette, brochette, chicken, chicken box, uh, kebabs. So. Yes, they have the rice here. I don't know what kind of Jolof. rice that is. That's their famous like uh jollof rice. So a lot of places in Africa, that's um what they eat. Uh huh. Um and so yeah, make sure they can see it. No, 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 just keep it like that. Yeah. Okay. And we got to try to make this neat. I'm like the stager here when it comes to this food. So yeah, yeah, yep. I had this all staged up for y'all before the video started, and then this happened. But I guess we can keep it like that. Can they see it? Yep. Yeah, oh, perfect. So you guys can see most of this. So I'm going to dig in. I kind of want to dig into this fufu. Like just get straight into the video and dig into the fufu. What you think? Yeah, Um. you know, it, it's a lot of people are um around the community say it's it's okay. I don't know. This is our first time trying it. So we're going to give you guys an honest review. Honest review. Very I'm not sure about nothing. Brutal review because yeah. on the outside it looks good, but we we have to see for ourselves how it tastes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So. And usually I see it wrapped up, the fufu wrapped up in some type of saran wrap or plastic, but this one wasn't wrapped up. It just came in here in this, uh, in this um, styrofoam plate with nothing and then it says plantain food food that's something i've just now known i didn't know it was made from plantain um and yeah they were supposed to be giving us some type of juice um that was made with can of i think honeydew and pineapple but we yeah. did not get our juice unfortunately. Um, unfortunately and yeah i think we should just just try it um i'm just gonna dig into this food food <laughs> you guys see never mind my hands okay all right we're going to dig into the fufu here. And I asked the girl what was good with this. And I was already looking at this meal. And she said the ma mafe was good with this. So I'm going to dig in. Oh, and those are really big pieces of... Oh, that's a carrot that I just dug into. Okay, so it's carrot with the sauce. You guys see that's a carrot in there. And then the sauce smells like a chili. So like a little bit like chili with peanut butter. Mmm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it tastes pretty good. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. It's like a sweet, kind of like a sweet touch, too. It's sweet. Yeah, the this is sweet. A sweet finish, sure. It is. And then I taste the, well, this is spicy, whatever the mafe. This is this is pretty spicy. I see some potatoes in here too. I'm waiting to get a piece of meat though. They said lamb came with it. I don't see any type of lamb. Okay. Nope. Nope. That might I don't know what that is. That may be a potato. I don't see any lamb in here. Oh, this may be a piece, a small piece of lamb right here. Small piece. Yeah, small piece. And so I don't know what part of lamb this is, but you guys see it's kind of pink in there. It reminds me of like a, a neck bone or something like that. 
And so, oh, it's it's nice and greasy up under there, guys. You see how that all of that grease there? Huh. Okay. Right. It's okay. Yeah, I give it a one out of ten. I give it a maybe a seven, six, seven, six, okay. seven, six and a half. Yeah, I expected this food to taste bad because people, so many people, like on Instagram, they give it such a bad review kind of connotation. But I think it's good. I think it's decent. Like I, I would, I don't know. I don't know if I would eat this again. Mm. I don't even know if I would eat it for lunch. But um, right. for right now, it's good. I mean, for me, just because you gotta keep it warm. You don't want this to get cold. This yeah, you don't want cold. Mm. You wouldn't want to eat it cold. Mm -mm. Okay, I, I I really like the textures. It's something I feel good about eating these textures and then bad at the same time because. It reminds me of like when your chips get soggy mm -hmm. and they taste good because the cheese and the meat is on top of it mm -hmm. and the, all of the flavors come together and it's just like mushy gooeyness. Like baby this food. Is, not like baby food, but like Please. but like mushy food, like like food that's not like good for you. But you know, I'm not saying that this isn't good for you, but you know, like junk food, like hey, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just eating my nachos with my cheese and my chips all together hold on our lighting just went out y'all uh-oh oh yeah sorry guys um uh, we just got a just some technical issues small technical issues um for the most <laughs> part I, ha I hope everyone's everyone's friday is going well the stock market is, is doing great uh the digital coins are up you know let's get in let's get in black people and people of all races of course yeah um, everybody let's, let's invest get in. Absolutely. That's um, the, the weather here in Chicago is great. Um, I don't know. We'll be traveling soon for the most part. We just got to figure out where we want to go. But yeah. I don't like that light. Okay, we're going to go with another one. Which one did we have? Was it this one? Also, Was remember to subscribe. One? Yeah. Subscribe, comment, like. Definitely. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the weather here is good. Now, the weather fucking sucks. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be warm outside. It and it's cold. It's, cold. it's only 50 degrees and it's mid-April. This like is what's though. happening here. But let's talk about this fufu. It's just like... It's really... Well, we knew it was going to be mushy. But it tastes way different from what I thought it was going to taste like. It's like it's like a guilty pleasure. That's what I mean. Like you know when when you eat nachos, you know it's bad for you because it's chips with a bunch of cheese on it. Yeah. This is like a guilty pleasure food. Mhm. Mm it's definitely a guilty pleasure. Like it's so good. Like it just re this reminds me of you know the play doh. Mmm. <laughs> it just reminds me of like eating play doh. I'm not no disrespect, but so as far as this, uh. I would give this like maybe a, a four. Mm. I don't like that. that okay. It, you don't a, like the texture or the taste? It's an acquired flavor. taste. It's a acquired I just, taste. I don't know. It's so hard to dis to describe the taste. I don't know. Let's talk about the lamb. For the, the lamb, the lamb is really good. I like the lamb. The lamb reminds me of neck bones or well, oxtails. Really? I don't know what type part of lamb that is. It, they said it was lamb, but mm -hmm. it definitely reminds me of oxtails. Mm -hmm. And it's good, but to be honest, I, I told myself that I would like to try other cuts of meat, other parts of meat from like the different um, cultures use. Mm -hmm. We don't really eat lamb like that, but this is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mmm. Yeah, just you probably should just pick that up and just eat on it, babe. Look at that. Show it to him. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a nice big piece. Mmm. Yeah, Mmm. Right. Just man, yeah, just just dig into it. Mmm. Mmm, this is good. This has peanut butter in it. Oh, we did see that on the menu. Peanut butter and tomato paste. I would really have never put that together. And then we have these egg rolls before I get too full because I'm trying to get really full right now. So, these egg rolls here have, like I said, look, look at that. They have chicken, beef, vegetables, 
And I thought they said shrimp. And then I see the spring roll noodles. Are these like rice noodles or something like that? I see those in there. I didn't know that Africans cook that. But again, I'm being enlightened. So no offense. I am being enlightened. And I'm going to try this. good as hell this is good mm. i like the outside so the one ton it's not as crispy as i would like it to be but whenever the one tons are fried they're really good the chicken is seasoned pretty well mm. these flavors are really good what's that what you got the chicken the brochette brochette chicken kebab mm-hmm yeah, shut It's really spicy. Is it really spicy? Mm hmm This reminds me of like those uh the Mediterranean. Remember that time we went to the Mediterranean restaurant? Mm. And they had the food mm -hmm. and they had all of the kebabs and stuff. That's the jollof rice. Your very first time having jollof rice. How is it? Mm. Is it everything that they say it is? Is it hot? Not quite, but I want to try it. My very first time having Jello Fries style. So. I'm loving the spices. Okay. I'm liking the spices. That's good. <laughs> this is good. It's good. That is good. Mmm. Mmm. Eat with the white girl. Eat. Damn. I mean, eat with the chicken girl. Let me try a kebab. Let me try this one. Damn, that's good. Mm. Now, this is a meal right here. Mm. I like this, the brochette chicken with the jollof rice. That rice is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, she eat the African style with her hands. I eat with my hands. I grew up eating with my hands. Right. And I, in fact, I always say, I think that if you trace your roots back, that you'll, it'll, they'll be in like Nigeria or West Africa. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, we... My babe, they're not eating my hands all the time. All the time. I didn't even know it was a fad or a trend. I was just doing it just because it's that good. <laughs> <laughs> Scrape the plate. No shame, my game. This rice is good. I'm gonna eat it with my hand. I'm gonna eat it with my hands too. Okay. I'm gonna eat the rice with my hands too. Hey, that's what's up for the culture. Mm. Hmm. 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 Made the soup out of here. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God! I'm so full. I can't. This I can't eat no more. Like really good. Is it? This chicken is so good. I feel like we just got darker for some reason. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we just wanted to come back and do the African food review. And so far, oh my gosh, that jollof rice is so good. Mm. And mainly because I'm a texture eater, and. I mean, I can't even explain all the spices. I taste the tomato paste. Mm. And the spices blend so again. well. I would get this again. And let me show them. They have a bed. The kebab comes on a bed of like onion mix. So that's mm. like, that looks like a bunch of onions with maybe some tomato. Wow. And maybe so some um, celery or something like that. I'm not too sure about what that is. But all I'm going to say is it came on a bed of it. And if you mix that with that rice and everything... I'm pretty sure that that will be so delicious. I can't do it because I can't take no more. I am super full right now. I can't, I can't do it. But Chanel is going to continue to eat. One of, one of the aspects, one thing that I like about this rice is so it's hydrated. Mm. It's so moist. And I think it's coming from like the onions. The onions are, um, the onions are soluble. So mm. it's giving away that, that moisture that I, that I like in my in my rice. I don't like any dry rice. Any rice that's dry is not good. Mmm. I love how hydrated this rice is. How moist. So good. It is. Is so. I'm gonna say I see why Africans like the jollof rice. Now I've had Mexican rice. I've had my rice, which I cook at home, and I call that the American rice because look, <laughs> my family. Honestly, we we we've had many many acres of land here in the in the states and we are the indigenous people of this of this country so i will tell anyone i am american okay i you know my my family tree can be traced back to here in native american dark skin 
and some lighter skin and hey we're native american and i'm gonna tell you the rice that i cook is really good and i just got the recipe from my mom and at the end of the day it's just like chicken and a bunch of spices and seasonings and white rice but when i by the time i'm done seasoning it it's not rice no and not it's not white no more huh? and then i've had puerto rican rice which i absolutely I love this is the best. yeah i love puerto rican rice i was exposed to it when i was younger my um dad's girlfriend was uh puerto rican and she would always cook that and it but it's a drier rice the puerto rican rice they they, they make it pretty dry this is really really moist and i could see myself eating this rice often compared to a lot of different rices that i've had it's like it's i'm not gonna lie it's better than mine because it's not even cooked with no type of meat it's just seasoning mm. you know it's just straight seasoned as rice okay this chicken is so bomb wow i did not think i, I did not expect this chicken to taste so good this chicken is so good so good i want to save it <laughs> i mean you can tell how seasoned. look at the seasons and look how everything is like and then to think about it yoked yeah there's a a lot of stuff going on there with the peppers and everything I but say that. i wonder if this rice if it gets any better than this because this is our first jollof rice experience i'm wondering if it gets any better than that because that's really good Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen um, like the Ghanaians and um, Nigerians like have a battle with who has the best rice, jollof rice. Mm -hmm. And these people were from, I think they say Yasa, Africa. I, I'm Don't quote me. I don't know all the countries in Africa. I would love to go, baby. I don't know, but they had a flag near Yasa on the African continent. And so I'm thinking they're from Yasa. Someone tell me in the comments if you're familiar you know where that is i saw that it was west africa near nigeria and um ghana but um yeah i'm wondering if a lot of different countries make it i'm just now sort of um opening my mind to it and the culture i think it's beautiful i love it i love the dances and you know now the food and you know and just overall it's a whole different vibe there in africa compared to here so I would love to go and taste some some more authentic mm -hmm. jollof rice from both Nigeria, Ghana, Yasa, Benin, mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia. If they make it there, like everywhere, and just to see how good that how, it is, how great it gets, how great it gets, because this is pretty good. This is amazing. I like so, it. so yeah, let's go ahead and rate everything. Um, as you all can see, we have plenty of the fufu left. We haven't even eaten half of it. Just because, for me, it just feels like a car. I'm trying to watch my carbs, and it is a, quite a lot of carbs. Um, and we still have a bunch of this left. We pretty much ate, eaten a bunch of the meat. It has big uh, pieces of maybe a uh, potato and sweet potato in there. Um, a couple more pieces of um, the lamb. Um, it's pretty, it tastes pretty good, but we didn't eat that much of it. But we definitely had our way with this jollof rice is it's a little it's still something in there for later but for the most part um and then we only took a couple bites of of that so how are we gonna rate them boo um <clears throat> so you you so i'm gonna I didn't go, taste you, it so oh you didn't taste it yeah i want to because my stomach are you full okay so i'll let me, let's go a ahead. tiny bite good for the people mm. Mm. What would you rate that one? One out of ten. I would say like a six. Okay, five, five, five and a half. A oh, five and a half. You gonna take it down? Yeah, just because as my, you know, by me being, by this being the first time I'm tasting it, I don't think it's like wow. Mm. Cause I'm so used to the Chinese cuisine. Mm. <laughs> so, and this is like a Chinese egg rolls. They're. Trying. I thought it was it was an Asian Cantonese type of thing. Um, okay. I'm gonna give them a. Mm, I'm I'm gonna be right with you. I'm gonna give like it like five. I'm gonna give it like a five and a half yes. with you, and mainly it's because I'm a texture eater, and it, it I I don't like the little noodles that's in there. I didn't know they didn't say that it had those spring noodles or whatever they're called. And when I look at to it into it, I don't really see a bunch of colors that I would necessarily like. And I would uh, much rather that be cabbage. But who am I to tell them to make 
um, their food. <laughs> but I am one to recreate food at home. And I would definitely use some cabbage in here. Um, I'm not really seeing the ground beef. So they say that they have ground beef. And I thought they had shrimp in here. But I don't see any of that. Um, but overall, it's a, it, the flavors come out real, to be really well. Um, so next, we're going to do the jollof rice. How would you get that? Out of oh, one? I, would, I would definitely give this an eight. Okay. I would give the jollo rice and a, the chicken just an eight just because I'm very pleased. Mm -hmm. Pleased and impressed by like how the flavor is kind of like kind of yoked together. Um, for the most part, the chicken is pretty, pretty flavorful. I would have to say, uh, the bell peppers and the peppers. I'm a big pepper person. Like mm. I eat pepper. Like I'm really strong on yeah, pepper. Yeah, she loves pepper, y'all. So I'm impressed. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give the chicken shabab like a five and a half. Okay. Just because I'm. I don't know. The flavor profiles to me were okay. It's nothing that's like, oh my gosh, this is good. It's taking my my palate into another <laughs> place, like um some other foods that I have tasted, some other chicken dishes um this jollof rice i would as far as rices go that's all i'm comparing it to um i would definitely say it's in a it's in a top two it's in a top two um so i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it an eight and a half the rice is really good i'm gonna give it an eight and a half just because i haven't this is my first experience having it and i don't know how good other um jollof rice is what about the mafe the mafe uh it was pretty decent i think um um, it was similar to um, the, 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 what's that, what's that? Uh, it was similar to the egg roll. In oh, which in what it way? was like a five and a half. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I, it's just a type of food that, that I would have to get used to. Um, this is my first time trying it just to give you guys a review. Um, but for the, for the most part, um, I, I, I give it a five and a half. Um, it, it's pretty decent. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it um, a four and a half five. That may sound sound harsh, but um, I like the lamb and everything. But as far as um, you know, some of the mixtures and the texture of it, like the gravy that's on it, it's a bit too thick. Um, you know, with the, you know, you don't have to, well, it comes with either jollof rice or, or the, um, full food. Um, it, it just, the textures were too mushy for me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to give it, and I didn't really understand it. Like what's in the sauce, like mm -hmm. it's peanut butter and paste and everything. But, um, I would like to have had some more vegetables, like maybe peas or something in there. Uh -huh. Just beans. because, yeah, something like that. Some peas or something or corn. I don't know. So the textures, they're all so mushy together and it just really didn't do it for me. Again, it's because I'm a texture eater, so no offense. Um, but um, <laughs> sorry if anyone gets offended by this, but it's a food review show and we're honest. And I don't care who who's cooking it. I don't care what culture or race. If you black, white, Puerto Rican, or Haitian, I'm going to be give my honest opinion on the food. Okay, and this fufu, I'm going to give the fufu uh, five and that's just because it tastes better than what i thought that it, it would taste mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i just thought it was gonna taste like some type of seasoned flour or something unseasoned flour okay. yeah or unseasoned flour but it actually tastes i don't know i can't really explain it. it's plantain it's, it's plantain but the the texture of it it's something fun about it but it's just like it's nothing i would really eat um you know i, I the texture it, it doesn't feel cooked and then just for me, for the thought of it, I don't know if it's cooked and it, it, I, it it's not for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's nothing I would try again, but I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that, you know, um, this particular restaurant did come into a historically black neighborhood and expose us to some of their cuisine and dishes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, for me, I don't, I don't know, it's such a, it's a fun thing to eat, but I don't necessarily think that it's a, it's good. It's just, um, it's just, it's like mixing, mixing bread with a Polish. Mm. So it's just like something that's just battered just, that helps you, you know, eat the real. Dig in. So yeah. I think it's just a, it's, it's a, a, side uh, it's a helper. Yeah. It's a side dish. Um, I don't think I would eat that alone. I'm going to just be honest. Yeah. I don't, I would not I eat. I would pair. That. I will always pair that 
this specific like fufu thing like with meat so i think it goes very well with meat um and not necessarily alone um yeah yeah so that's our artist ass review honest of this fool and we are not meaning to offend nobody hopefully we didn't let us know what you all think let us know if you all would taste it and let us know if you all appreciate our honesty but try for yourself see how you like it every restaurant is not created equally mm -hmm. we tried it we love the joe love rice chanel love the kebab i think the the, the rolls were good the egg rolls, um, I just didn't like the texture and everything, the the look of it. And the fufu, I mean, everything is okay. So let us know what y'all think. Yeah. We're approaching 30 minutes into this video. We want to go ahead and let y'all go. And thank you for watching another episode of Midwest Foodies Kitchen. And we are super excited to bring out this video. So we'll show y'all the outside of the, the restaurant, the inside of the restaurant. And here we go. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Midwest Foodies Kitchen. <laughs> I am Venetia, a.k.a. Vanille. You know, I go by many monikers, okay? Aaron Chanel. Hey, so we are here today at the Cheesecake Factory. That's right. The one and only world one renowned cheesecake factory you can't go wrong here you know they have so many different things on the menu we love pretty much everything that we've eaten i don't think we've had anything bad on the menu here at cheesecake factory have you? nah but i think we kind of like have you had any other like entrees or is this yeah. entree? well we okay so today well i'll let you all know what we have but we've had quite a few things i've had quite a few things on the menu all of their drinks are always good the cheesecake is definitely good um, the last time we had the fried cauliflower, remember the Japanese, oh, yeah. the Korean style mm -hmm. fried cauliflower, and that was really good. And so, yeah, so without further ado, I want to let you guys know what we have. Of course, we have a slice of cheesecake here. This is, oh, excuse me, my hands are so ashy, by the way. I just washed them. Um, but this is the key lime mango cheesecake. Take a look. You see at the bottom, there's a roll, a bed of coconut there. And then you have like a couple different layers of stuff, like the mango and the key lime. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That, this is my favorite cheesecake. So every time I come here, I definitely get this one right here. So one second, I want to get that back in our camera. Uh-oh. Some technical malfunction. So sorry, you guys may not be. Oh, there we go. Okay. Cool. And so, you want to tell them what you got? Uh, the pasta. Carbonara. Carbonara. That's, that, this is one of my other favorite dishes, um, and her favorite dish as well. So, it's the spaghetti noodles with bacon, peas. Uh, we had chicken added. And, uh, yeah, it's so freaking good. And olive oil. And then she had Parmesan cheese put on top. Oh, my gosh. Looks so good. And I had the uh, chicken Madeira, which is one of my other favorites. Um, so it's chicken with mushrooms, a Madeira sauce, and uh, mashed potatoes. And you guys, look at that. They give you so much. And then asparagus. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah. So without further ado, we are going to start because we've been waiting a while. Let's see. Okay, I'm excited. Oh, where should I start? I think I'm gonna try the mashed potatoes first. Yeah. Are you gonna try some of mine? Yeah, you guys, I always pick like the least favorite. But, least favorite. But that is so good. Oh my God, these mashed potatoes are, mm. no exaggeration. These are the best mashed potatoes outside of my own that I've ever tasted. And as you guys can see, I wanna, I wanna show you. They're um, made with red potatoes. You see all the red chunks in there? They are so good, seasoned really well. Mm. I love for potatoes to be kind of salty. Mm -hmm. And I can taste the salt in there. I don't know what else that is I'm tasting. But. This is so, this is so good. So delicious. The sauce is so flavorful. Yes, that's one thing that the um, Cheesecake Factory does is they know how to make a good sauce. And so, um, as you can see, the Madeira is the Madeira is like a wine, a wine sauce, a red wine sauce that they make, and they make it a, a little bit creamy, and they put it on top of the chicken, and they put mozzarella cheese. They bake mozzarella cheese on top, 
and um, and put the asparagus there and the mushrooms and see that. So I got some of everything on my bite. Y'all know how I do. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I love to get. Okay, so the Madeira sauce is sweet. The chicken and mozzarella is savory. And the asparagus has that, you know, earthy. Uh, and the asparagus and the mushrooms have a very earthy flavor. So it's a lot of different flavors in your mouth. And it pumps together really well. And it, it makes you feel like you're eating something really healthy because it is light and pretty pretty refreshing. It's just, you know, you're getting, you're getting your, your nutrients with every single bite. So I love this dish. Oh, I'm going to try yours. Go ahead. Can I try yours? Mm-hmm. I think... The mashed potatoes are so good. It's my favorite um, place to eat. Yes. She's a, I mean, you so can't go wrong to. with anything on, a, on their menu. Like, I've had... Um, it's so good. The mashed potatoes are so good, right? Mm -hmm. I've had... The, the, they have uh, these crab balls that are really good. Um, and another thing is the service is always good here. I've never had a, a bad experience. Have we had a bad experience? Not that I recall. Yeah, so we haven't had too much of a bad experience here. Um, it's at the Water Tower here in Chicago, um, right across from Biddy Hana, which we're going to do a video at Biddy Hana one day. <laughs> but um, it's, it's lunch time, so it's not too packed. And, you know, due to COVID, you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't out and it's cold outside, so. We're here pretty early, once again, um, to one of our restaurants where we're getting in before rush hour. Uh -huh, let's see. I hope you guys' day is going great. Mm. That's good. I think that that needs a little bit of salt for me. I like salt, Chanel doesn't. I like a lot of salt on my food. Pepper. <laughs> she loves pepper. You guys know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I used to get that, but it's something about the pasta that really fills me up so quickly that I don't really get pasta anymore. Um, but yeah. Um, what are we going to talk about? Oh, Takashi69. Huh? The controversy. Takashi. Yeah. It's so crazy that um, this young man is is like he's trolling everybody, and um, I just feel feel bad. Like this is why I guess I guess he's known for that. I watched the documentary, and it made me feel like I, you know, I understood what he was coming from with kind of like the snitching and stuff. They did a really good job at trying to clean up his image and and. And giving us a picture, painting a picture of why he did it. But when I see him today and he's still trolling people, I, I wonder what his motives are. Like, I guess fame and clout, but it's also like, I feel like he's trying to expose people in the industry for not being as tough as they say that they are. What he's saying is basically, these are rappers, these are artists. Y'all people are really listening to them and thinking that they're about their life and they're not. And I kind of see that because he's kind of like telling the, the children or the younger people like, hey, these people aren't like this in real life. And I think it's kind of good to expose that. But at the same time, I think it's very disgusting to talk about dead people. Um, and it, dead, dead people, like, why? Just, you know, that people are really sensitive. Their hearts are hurting. Their kids. Right. His it, mother. Right. And, and when we say his, we're talking about uh, King Bun. Like, he hasn't even been gone. Or anybody, Snoop with uh, Meek Mill, he, was, he talked about them. Anybody, don't talk about dead people. Like, they're dead, let them rest and let their families heal. And so I don't get why you want to even start that type of situation. But, hey, to each his own, and I just wish him the best. And hopefully he finds his peace. And, you know, it's just like, hopefully you have your security forever in life because... I don't know. Some people get, you never know. You know, some of these people may be about their life in real life, or, you know, the people that's in their families probably aren't, um, you know, don't care about a, a life or a career or a life in prison. And so it's just like tread lightly because everybody get caught lacking at some 
given point in their lives and you know i just hope that they can find a peace and keep it as entertainment but again once you start talking about death and stuff that's taking it to a whole new level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you I used to like be more accepting of um, Takashi, but just talking about something so sensitive, it just because I just lost a friend. Mm -hmm. I just lost my friend back in September. Danisha. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and so I'm looking at it, I'm putting myself in the family shoes. Mm -hmm. If I was to wake up one morning and see that this, 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 this random guy just talking about somebody that, that Die that was very close to me, and it's just it's distasteful. It's I don't know, it just shows who he, the per type of person he is, and it also shows who he worked who he worked for, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, who would you say he works for? Is it an industry thing or what a devil? Like, definitely the de definitely um, the devil, mm -hmm. definitely you know, Jewish people, no offense. Um, so, yeah. I mean, because what else will possess you or um, entice you to, to talk about something that was so deeply heavy? You know what I'm saying? He was gunned down, right? And to talk about it as though it's some type of celebration or some type of yeah. But and I guess that is what the devil does. They celebrate death. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. That is what the devil does. He he celebrates death like he leads you down that path, mm -hmm. and it, it, this is is. Nothing makes makes that entity or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I rebuke say the name of Jesus. <laughs> nothing yeah. makes that more happy than the death and your life being ruined and you ruining other people's lives. So it makes a lot of sense that that that's who who he's he, who he's pleasing by doing it and that he is that himself. And a lot of these people don't believe in God. They worship money. You know, they believe in the industry. They chase fame and they chase clout. And they don't have any regard for any higher being. So, mm -hmm. I, I get it. And so, we're just on a, we're getting caught up in a web of something that, you know, doesn't really have anything to do with us. You know, but at the same time, I mean, we're, we're living on a stage in this world. And we're all here together. And through media, we keep in touch. And it's so easy to get into other people's. Yeah. life and business it, but it's like it's like they're they if we get too involved in it and to and feel so too much about it i feel like it, we can't get pulled down in that right to hell with them to be honest like we have oh. yeah it's not it's not the fact that we're getting caught up per se i think that it, it hits home like that's like coming to somebody's house and saying hey you know fuck your grandmother who just died i mean mm -hmm. he's from chicago and here it is you're a rapper that just was released mm -hmm. off of you know snitching. snitching and you're stirring up trouble like it, it's just like you're stirring up trouble that that you claim you don't care about but someone who has so much security would not care versus somebody who know that who know they're gonna come in the hood who know that they they're gonna come down downtown and shop someone who knows it's just like he's riding off of black people in our image mm. and he's making a profit off of it why not go to your community and talk about the people that you know not right. talk about anyone that that's deceased but why not you know what i'm saying profit you're off saying your why, community why you're saying why why try to control the black community or even black culture or hip hop culture. Exactly, but in the same sense, you're saying that we're F us. Like you're saying, Takashi, you're saying, yeah, y'all not nothing, y'all not nothing, but. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's a new one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, but you're not, you're also showing us that you're a fan. Like you, you actually like the, the, the black culture and you're monetizing off of it. You know, but on one hand, you're saying, you know, you're bashing us and you're dissing us, but it's just pick a side, you know? Like, I come from where it's just not cool to talk about that that type of stuff and to do that. It's just so distasteful and it just shows who, what type of person he is, you know? And if anyone out there that thinks that that's, that's funny, that's not funny at all. It's like, not. it's it's so sad. It's so sad because that can happen to him, that can happen to his brother, his homie, but it's like, 
for what? You know, I just think that they hold things unnecessary. Yeah. For the most part. It's unnecessary, especially to go to the extent of being on the ground, acting out a person, being on the ground dead. And this isn't the first time he's done this. Like, he's literally constantly... Well, I guess it's a beef that he's having with these people, and then I guess he feels like he's hitting them as hard as it can hurt, and talk about talking about talking about their dead friends, their dead homies, and you know, just we see we know how that goes, you know. But he's surrounded, like we said, he sold his soul to the devil. He's surrounded by plenty of security and police officers, and there's something there's definitely for him to go to this extent. I feel like there's definitely something that he knows that we don't. You know, it, and that's just what it is. Whether it be what contract he signed with them people, or maybe he have a lifetime of security. I, that was probably one of his, you know. And he's rich. And he's rich. He may have a lifetime security uh, clause. You know, a lot of, when well, you think about it, a lot of celebrities do. A lot of, look at politicians, like the presidents and stuff. They have secret service agents there all the time, even after their presidency. So, it's, it's definitely possible that he has a lifetime of security and so he's gonna take advantage of it he probably paid a lot for it and he's gonna take advantage of that lifetime of security so on to the next from him i think today is like bobby christina's uh is it her birthday or something like that rest in peace to bobby christina Whitney Houston's daughter that was a really sad tragic situation with you know so many of their family members dying in such short periods of time it's just like rest in peace you know rest in peace tour and rest in peace yeah so you finished you pretty much <laughs> oh my goodness you didn't eat the bacon i'm gonna i'm gonna steal her bacon since she didn't eat it i'm gonna steal it and put it on my pasta. she didn't eat her bacon or her peas eat your peas <laughs> the, the peas make it so good to me though the bacon yeah, nice creamy piece of bacon. Now it's time for dessert. Uh oh. I'm trying to limit my limit myself to one meal per day. Oh okay. I have a training coming up. So. Oh yeah, she, you want to tell them about it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I have a training coming up in the next few weeks, in the following week or so. Um, I actually have a um, job opportunity um, to become a correctional officer. Um, it may not be the, the career that I choose, but it's definitely a stepping stone, just in the whole criminal justice department. <clears throat> and so I'm wishing myself the best of luck with that one. And so I have this intensive training, physical training that I have to do um, down in Springfield. So I'm just trying to keep, limit, limit my meals to one per day. So hopefully, wish me luck, I can do that. Um, for the most part, I can drink no liquor for seven days. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck, because we were just talking about how we think we're alcoholics because it's so hard to not drink. Like we're young, and we like to drink. We, you know, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed or anything. So honestly, alcohol is like my medication. It keeps my anxiety from going up. I don't encourage anyone to be like that. Like, but I've noticed over the past couple of years, I like to drink. Okay, I guess that's what happens in adulthood. Things get stressful, and some people work out to relieve their set. Their set. Lordy and Slip. Some people work out to relieve their stress. Some people have sex to relieve their stress. Some people watch TV to relieve their stress. I like to drink every now and then. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I finished that. And I still have a whole plate over here. But I'm getting pretty full. Let's move this over. Um, you want to finish eating some? Okay. She's going to finish um, eating some of my food. And then we're gonna. Uh, this is what the you guys came finale. here for. It's the one and only cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory. Uh oh. Stop here. What? Your food is way better than mine. Yeah, take some more. I thought she. Yeah, she said she was limiting herself to one meal a day. She's I a one and a half. Luck. She's a one and a half already. <laughs> But I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna encourage you. I love to feed her. I love to cook. I love to eat. So I kind of blame myself. Um, but yeah, say something for this. Are you didn't like the mashed potatoes? No. Really? You're not a really a potato fan. No. Nope. You don't eat potatoes like that. No. Okay. Okay. Well, let's move that over. Are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So we're gonna say that for later and have food to eat uh, later this afternoon or this evening. And we're gonna go for the cheesecake. Is there another fork over there or a spoon? Uh, yeah. You want the fork or the spoon? Uh, I just use my fork. My fork. Oh, you just use that fork. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure you wipe it. <laughs> Did we get two new masks or just two? Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. I don't think mine fell in but That was really nice for him to bring us one. Yeah, cause I. I have realized it. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, dropped her mask on a, on the floor near us, and the server actually came and and gave us a a new mask. It was really nice. Not the server. I think he's the manager. So yeah, let's start. Oh my gosh, guys. I think uh, yeah. I'm just gonna take a slice straight from the top. Are we gonna do a thumbnail? We might as well do a thumbnail right here and right now, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. One, two. Oh, nope, not my coconut. One, two, three. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I just feel like this is such a good, a big bite. You go first. You wanna? Oh. <laughs> no, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> what does that look? Is that is that a good is is that a good or a bad look? Mm, what do you taste? Like what are the flavors? The flavors are so acidic. Mmm. From the lime, the key lime. Mm -hmm. So it just melts. Oh. And the whipped cream just tops it. It's like milk and cake at the same time. Say Think about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my God! It's so good. Has we a box for that? Oh yeah. yeah. I'll be back for one second. Thank okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Okay. She's enjoying it. Enjoying it a little bit too much, babe. <laughs> oh. It's so good. I'm sorry, y'all. It's so decadent. Oh my god. It's like I just had a full gas. I'm is sorry. Coconut? Yes. Coconut is her favorite. I love coconut, but that's not even my favorite part about this. My favorite part is the key lime. And it almost tastes like orange. But it's mango. You see the the the, the um like not frosty but the glaze at the top? And that layer at the top is the key lime. And then the next layer is the um, the cheesecake, mango cheesecake. And right under that, there's a coconut layer. And then the graham cracker layer. Oh, my God. It's so many different flavors in one. It's so delicious. It's just the right amount of sweet. And like you said, citrus. Mm -hmm. This key lime bar is so fucking delicious. And I've had regular key lime cheesecake. But for some reason... This is so much better than that. Because it, it almost tastes like orange. Okay. I'm going to take another bite. That's going to hold off. You're going to hold off? Yeah. You don't like it as much as no, me. No, because I ate the whole pasta. Yeah. And it's like, uh, it's I'm just too much. Up. My stomach is filled up. Okay, well, her stomach is filled up. And or my not. stomach is too. Look. <laughs> my stomach is filled up. And I'm going to take the other half of this and eat it later. So our uh, line is, mmm, that is good. Yeah. Let's go and chop this up. No rush. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So, yeah, this is going to be it. Just um, cheers, our kids. You're going to cheers. 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 Okay. I let my pants down so I could get this digest this. Mm. I gotta close my eyes. I'm, I'm so serious right now. Mm. So good. But you know what? I'm not even supposed to be eating any of this because I just got my teeth white yesterday and it was torture for an hour and now they're going to go back yellow. They told me not to eat anything yellow, brown, red for 24 hours and it has only been like 20 hours. 
That's my bad, sorry. I'll drink some water, rest my mouth. But yes, thank you guys for watching us today with the Midwest Foodies Kitchen. We're gonna go and do some shopping, look around. I'm gonna later go and get some Botox. <laughs> I'll tell you guys about that um, on the next video. And so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will leave you all a um, view of the restaurant. So thanks guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, now, ciao. Ciao. Okay, so first off, you want to take your bacon and put it in a sizzling hot pan. This is just four pieces of bacon that I cut in half so that they could fit the sandwich properly. So you want to let that sizzle and get brown. There you go, voila. Oh my gosh, look at how good that looks. It's frying up. Throw your American cheese on there. I use two slices because I like mine really cheesy. Next, you want to put your eggs on top. I just put pepper in the eggs because the bacon has its own salt. I use sourdough bread as my bread of choice. And you want to, you know, dip it on there, twist to get the egg on both sides of the bread. Because, of course, we are making a French toast. So, yeah, what I was doing here is kind of letting some of the loose uh, liquid eggs spread under the, um, the already cooked egg. And you flip it over like so. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to make this that I grabbed the wrong spatula. All right, there you go. Flip it over and oh my gosh, look at how good that bacon looks. It's all cooked in the egg and the cheese is in the middle. Oh my gosh, this was so good. I'm actually about to go and make another one. I could not be a vegan. I'm sorry. I just could not take it. I was craving bacon. So now I'm just adding cinnamon because this is cinnamon French toast. Um, yep. And I spread my little sugar on there and then I'm going to flip it. And that's going to melt on that side and cook into that bread. And I'm adding more cinnamon to the other side while the other side is cooking. The egg is still cooking in there as well. Add that sugar. This was such a good sandwich. I used two eggs as well. So it's two eggs, four pieces of bacon, one piece of sourdough bread, just cut in half, no butter, just all grease, bacon grease. Um, none of that was necessary. Well, no butter was necessary. Now I'm gonna flip it just to make sure the egg is cooked thoroughly. I don't like loose runny eggs. If you do, then you don't have to put the top on. Okay, so we're about done. Yes, look at that. It was so golden brown and sweet and savory at the same time. This sandwich was so good. And then it was a bit greasy. Which, you know, I like greasy foods. To be honest, it, I'm from Chicago. We eat a lot of fast food here. And, um... Yeah, the greasier sometimes the better, but it wasn't over greasy to where you would feel sick or anything. I wanted to leave this part unedited, unedited so that you all can actually see how I adjust my cameras and everything. And look, nothing is perfect. We're in this together. Um, I'm just going to cut the sandwich in half here. Oh, it looks so good. Okay. Perfect angle, trying to get that perfect angle for you guys. And here we go. Take that butter knife. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Like my mouth was salivating as I was cutting this. I was so excited. Look at the steam. And it was heavy. Oh, that bacon didn't cut all the way. Let's go and cut it again. The second time's a charm.
oh my god look at the cheese the bacon the egg the french toast oh my god when i say this sandwich was so freaking good you guys have to try it make it just how i just showed you all and you cannot go wrong and look nothing's perfect it was not the neatest sandwich but it was delicious okay so i'm back with you all to tell you that being a vegan has been one of the hardest things that i have ever done so things were seemingly going okay for i would say the first week but by the time day seven came mind you i had already lost three four pounds you know i was feeling good i was like yes i can do this as you guys can see in my latest uh last two videos but man when i tell you i'm gonna have to be a part-time vegan <laughs> because i became one stressed I was stressed because I could not do what I wanted to do, which was eat, okay? I'm used to having a warm meal every morning, um, bacon, uh, possibly eggs, some rice on the side. Look, I'm from Chicago, we're from the South. I eat my rice with sugar and butter, okay? And I could not do that. And as much as I want to say the world, say the animals, not put that crap into my mouth. I felt too restricted and I feel like I want to do what I want to do because you, know, you only live once, okay? And my family members, they do have high blood pressure disclosure, but their health is kind of in good standing. And they do a lot of other things outside of eating meat, okay? And so I just felt like if there becomes a time where I actually really need to stick to this, I will, but as of right now, life is too short. I have so many other stressors, so many things that I have to continue to accomplish that I don't believe that I could stick to it right now. It's it's not even about me not being able to. I don't think that I want to. I know that I don't want to because one, I don't need another stressor. And I found myself really becoming angry because I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. And that's totally not a good a good feeling. And why do that to myself? I don't need that type of stress right now. I have other purposes, other things to do. And look, I'm being as transparent as I can, okay? A lot of people wouldn't even tell y'all, but I t I'm telling the truth, okay? I want you guys to know the truth, the nitty gritty. And I am today about to go to the grocery store. After, mind you, after throwing away all of my food, I had steaks, I had uh, chicken, I had fish, I had shrimp, I had all types of food that I threw away. And um, yeah, by day, by day eight, by day eight, I was um, really craving, um, you know, meat. And I was, I, like I said, I was angry and I don't want to be go through my day being angry. And um, I realized three, um, that food is connected deeply to my emotions. Look, that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. It depends on how you look at it, how you look at life. And if food is my happy place, which it is a lot of people, I think that's why people become chefs and people become lovers of food. Um, if that's connected to my emotions, that's my happy place, then why not, um, why restrict myself um, from my happy place? Um, I don't want to be one of those bitter people who be, uh, become angry at other things. Like they, they, they displace their anger at other things because inwardly they're not happy because of the decisions that they're making. I don't want to be that. So yes, I wanted to just come and let you all know that I will be a part-time vegan. Some of the restaurants that I've been to were great. Um, I've had great vegan food. I have not tasted a vegan dish that was not good um but at the same time it's still fast food and i don't know what's in the mixtures of these foods it, it could be some of the same either gmos or other um byproducts and so hey look it's not a bad thing i'm a great person i still have many other qualities but um man being a vegan was stressful and i, I i'm gonna say big ups to those who have done it i've had um you know people some of um want to share that they've been a vegan 15 years other people 20 years 10 years 
that's a, a big up to you all. Um, it takes some real serious restraint and maybe food isn't connected to your emotions in that way and you didn't get as angry and stressed as I did. So I applaud you for that. And look, let me know what you guys think. Um, I hope that you like this video with this honesty and I will in the future cook vegan meals. Um, I will cook both. I have no issue with that. And so, yeah, I have some big things in store. Right now, I'm going to go to Whole Foods and get some food. I want some bacon and some eggs. And I have a pretty special meal that I want to make. Um, and maybe I'll leave that at the end of this video. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, your 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 comments mean a lot. Likes mean a lot. And subscribing means a lot because you get to see me more often. And um, yeah, so stay tuned. I will show you all what I'm cooking this morning. Bye. <laughs>everybody welcome back to midwest foodies kitchen and i am vanille erin what up what up aka venetia and chanel but you know how we do we got many different monikers out here especially since we are in motherfucking miami okay <laughs> look let us close this window because we are about to eat and we're gonna get loud all the this on. man we got the smacking the snacking and everything we just stood at trick daddy's restaurant sunday's eating eatery Your, yours truly yours trick truly daddy a for what we stood in the lap for 45 minutes to yeah, get this food. it wasn't bad though the people are it great was not bad we done people met people great. black people hey black people know how to bring the party we had the we had the whole drive through busing. My mom with all black people in there trapping, <laughs> trapping. I think we saw one or two white people. They was with their black. Yeah, but they you can see they was like with yeah, the shit. They was with the shit. They was with the shit. <laughs> hey, shout out to all our white people out okay, there that's okay. with the shits. Um so yeah, let us get started. First of all, we should probably show them our where we're gonna start out with what's this baby? What's uh, this? That's the fried ribs. Ooh, we got fucking the yams. fried ribs, guys. Look at that. Look Ooh. at the goldenness on them ribs. And then we have mac and cheese and mac and cheese and sweet potatoes look at how good look look at the golden crispiness mm -hmm. on these ribs i ain't never had no fried FYI, ribs I, we've never had fried we've never ribs, had them. so we we trying to see how it how it is okay everything comes with the rice at the bottom you see that bed of, of rice okay that's a that's a southern thing because we don't really do rice right. like that where we from and we got three meals by the way because we love to eat love to eat um and what were we going to show them in a second what's that over there uh this here I think it's a steak. No. Oh, no, oh, this is the fried catfish. Look at how big that fillet is. Damn. And they give you two big ass that, fillets. That flap down. Look at that. Oh, it's nice and golden. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, let's see. Oh, look at look oh, at the party. Give him some milk. Uh, you gonna eat some, baby? Oh, right mm -hmm. mm -hmm. big bite. Oh, it's a good baby. I ain't even tasted it. Mmm, this shit golden crunchy. I'm about to try it right now. Look, we mm. can't even wait, y'all. Mm. No, it don't even need no hot sauce. Oh, got some greens. Oh, okay, what the mustard? Mm, um, the collard. I mean, collard or something like that. That may yeah, be hot macaroni. sauce. That may be their version of hot sauce. That that's so like, like that. I think that might go with the fish. Yeah. Oh, that fish good. That fish real good. Okay, Trick Daddy, uh -huh. shout out. <laughs> and then of course my baby had to get she fancy and shit. She had to get. That's my favorite. T-bone steak. Big ass. With ounce. the white rice, and we we needed to get another side, so we got fries. Mm -hmm, with the and, and green beans. So them, are those fresh? Nah, these are from out the can, but they, oh, they good. Got some sweet meat. I don't know if that's sweet. That might be uh, it's some type of turkey though. It's some it, type ain't, of, it ain't sweet meat though. That ain't not sweet meat. That might be turkey, turkey uh, some turkey tails or something like mm, that. This is good. It's good, but yeah, here's the T-bone steak. Looking good. It actually tastes really flavorful. Really got the onions on there. It's it's good yeah. to me. It just tastes. I taste a lot of salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put that. What what you going? Oh. Show my drinks. Oh, yeah. He go to diabetes. You already started. Who? This is like some type of Kool-Aid like that Trick Daddy got. Signature Kool-Aid, I guess. Let me try it. It's real. It ain't that sugary, but mm. if you got high blood pressure or diabetes, no. Ooh, it's sweet. Mm. Wait, I lied. It is true. It's sweet. Damn, but what is, is it like raspberry Kool-Aid? Blue raspberry? Is. Yeah, that's what I, it ain't just blueberry though. Or is it a lemonade? It's a concoction of many. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely some lemonade in it. This is sweet, y'all, but it is so good. It's addictive. And then, desserts. And then look at how big the cup is. Yeah, you trying to send a motherfucker to the Miami hospital. <laughs> Shit. 
And um, we also got um, some cupcakes. So this Blueberry. is just specialty. Vel no, velvet. This is like, oh, blue velvet cupcakes. Yeah. So let's open this up. They look really soft. Look, good. look at them. Y'all see that? They look really soft. Let's see. Let's test it. Not, not yet, baby. Eat first. Mmm. Mmm. That frosting is good. <laughs> okay, that's that cream cheese frosting. Ooh, for real? Yes. Yes. Okay, trick that. Look, Daddy. we eat good in Miami. Okay, you know. You know. Uh, we got so. This was like a oh, they Adam. complimentary because we didn't order this and the girls ahead of us who we met. If y'all watch this video, hey girl, hey. We got their banana pudding. Sorry, we didn't know. They gave it to us, so we got it free, and we get to tell y'all how it tastes. Mm, let's smell it. Let's smell it. Mm. Ooh, it's fresh. Like, oh, uh, uh, fresh bananas. No, fresh bananas, baby. Mmm. It smells so fresh. Oh, my God. It's okay. really good. Like, let's get a one in 10. Oh, it's whipped. It's like a... Mm. It's whipped like a mousse. Mmm. That is fucking good. Mmm, uh, this is really good. I don't really like my pudding to be, like, banana-y, but like too much like banana pudding i like the vanilla mm -hmm. but since it's whipped it gives a different texture and it tastes better mm. so yeah that's delicious right there y'all so let's start i'm gonna try these ribs yeah i'm gonna try those the mac too. and cheese the yams and the greens the dough's hot baby not them dough's okay yeah, we, like, we, we are in the hood a little bit you know <laughs> that's okay so yeah uh we're gonna hold our bowl so, where are these forks do you got your forks and then tartar first, sauce first that's for the fish okay. tartar sauce ma'am Okay, you ain't starting. I'm about to start. So don't, oh, no. oh, God is good. God is great. Thank you for this food today, Lord. Thank you for blessing us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus well. Hey. Oh, look. We got the candy yams with, with the mac. Oh, I dropped my candy yam. Uh. Let me taste the yams, baby. No, I love yams. These mm -hmm. nine. Oh, let's see, Trudy. I know he goes. What? I ain't never tasted something macaron like this. It tastes like you got seasoning salt in it. Really? Yeah, you got some over there, baby. It tastes like that season, so I never had it like this. Mm. It's okay. Is it good or no? How you like it? Do you like it? That's different. I'm just used to the cheesy and different cheese. Right, this is different. That's I'm going to say it's okay. I'm going to say it's okay. I, I, I kind of like the kind of my mom. My mom used crab cheese on her macaroni and, <gasps> and cream cheese. Okay. That should be good, though. Shout out my keto. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's different trick there. That one tastes those greens. Green. Your? Huh? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna Don't show them, baby. Don't show them. You want for the steak? Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. All right. Well, well, what sauce is that? So I can have it. That's for the catfish. Or some. We put on anything. Oh, these string beans good. I've had better, but they're good. You try the greens. And the cornbread. Can I try the greens? Oh, well, y'all gotta see. We gotta show them. Here's the cornbread. Mmm. This green is good. Oh, green is good, boy. Damn, Trick Daddy. Okay, Trick Daddy. Y'all see that? This green is good. She say Trick Daddy call her. You believe that? It's probably good. Mm -hmm. Trick Daddy know everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trick Daddy. Daddy. He know he with the hood. He with the hood. He know exactly who's going to support him. Yeah, this girl in line, she from Chicago. She an older lady. She was just going crazy in line. All these string beans good, y'all. You talking better than green? Oh, my homie. These good. Now, the green taste better. Sure. Mm. But they so good. What's that red stuff? Probably crushed red peppers or something. Ooh, let me say some of that juice for my steak. This steak's so tender. Ooh. I'm normally steaks, be, no, normally steaks be like tough and shit. This shit's so tender. I'm picking off mm. the fish, y'all. Ooh, and dropping it. We fucking this rental up. <laughs> Oh, it got shrimp in the damn uh rice. Okay, okay. I'm not a fan of big fan of like that yellow rice and stuff, but I'm gonna mm. try it. Let's see. Okay. Mm. It's good. Fries really good. Yeah, because they had no other sides that we wanted. And I need that fries. They soggy. Man, they're they soggy because they're they, they, oh, they're good. For your money. You mean one for my money? Mm -hmm. I ain't really tried the last time I made them. <laughs> but you know, if I put my... Uh -huh. No, they decent, though. The green's real good, though. Let me see. Okay, this rice is good. It tastes like... I think just Spanish. I taste oh, wow. Or it maybe wild. Or is this like some Haitian stuff? Or? Yeah, like some type of... Tree Daddy might be Haitian. Or is it... Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So it's time to taste these fried ribs, okay? Yeah. This is what y'all really came for. I want to taste that. I know this is what y'all really came for. So here we go, y'all. One for the money, two for the show. That's not really a big bite. Mm -hmm. Trying to get some meat. Mmm. Mm. Okay. All right. Fried ribs for the first time. It's a lot of fat on there. They tender. They're done. It tastes like a pork chop. To be honest, this tastes like a pork chop, but it may be a pork rib. Oh yeah. This really puts me into the mind of a pork chop. This is different. We maybe maybe we should try that sauce. I don't, I don't know where to go on. Mm -hmm. I'll try it for you. It looks like a mixture of mustard and hot sauce. Let's see. Let's there see. you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good. Really, can I dip some? It tastes like honey mustard or something. Mm -hmm. Damn. Let me dip it back. That's what it tastes like, honey mustard. So y'all, this is Trick Daddy sauce. We they put it in our bag, and we got so many meals, we don't know what Damn, to go that's with. Good. It might go with the ribs or I don't know. This shit good. Okay. <laughs> that lady is from Chicago. Period. I thought somebody. <laughs> you said I thought a bro bitch said, said some. Period. Period. She's funny. She's from Chicago. She's just like for a party, y'all. Mm-hmm. But we've been loving Miami. This is day the two. The people are great. My birthday Them bitches weekend. in New York. When we went to New York, yeah. they was aggressive. Like, move yeah. out the way. Yeah. Strong, but that's what they say about New York people. They say that they not as like friendly, friendly as um like yeah. Chicago. I wonder why they have been really friendly to us here, treating us very well. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of Cubans. Well, I'm not used to seeing Cubans. I thought they was black. Their skin looked black. Their features look black, Hell and then no. they talk and they don't speak no English. Cubans look are black. I had my mentor was Cuban. Well, I've seen black Cubans, but they look. I've seen them where they still look Latino. Oh yeah. Like their features, you know, there's a difference in oh, features. But right. they these look like black. They look like African descent. Well, I guess Cubans are African African descent, and we span across many different cultures. So hey, I've I've been enlightened, and that's all I can say. I've been enlightened. Is it good, babe? Mm -hmm. Give me a kiss. Oh, that's how you do it when you eating good, baby. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you put some loving I'm on that love. That's okay. She eating good. Like Wayne said, they tell me I'm getting weighed. I tell them I'm getting paid. Okay, and that's exactly. She did have. They thick over here. We gonna see some more that tonight. These women out here thick. They thicker than a snicker. Every woman I don't saw thick as hell. Now where you got that coconut from? <laughs> yeah, there's some more over there. Uh uh. Well, you you know what we got here. You don't want to get the guy? Y'all go, you gonna eat it? We're gonna wrap it up. Let's see what this is about. It's a lot more growing up there. Thank you. What? This motherfucker dry though. Oh. Where y'all from? Y'all from it? Y'all from the uh LA too? Oh, so y'all got these. This come out y'all trees too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> really? I'm about to say, wait, wait, what? We from Chicago. We don't got palm trees. Hell so, no. Y'all in the windy shit. Yeah. We ain't got shit but snow. <laughs> right. <laughs> we need a bag. Let's just wrap it up in a bag. Oh, oh, get this. Oh, so we just got a coconut, guys. Take a look at that. A big, I don't hear anything in it. It's definitely open. We definitely probably gonna be throwing this away because I don't hear no coconut juice. I, I like to drink coconut water and have it with my rum. Maybe some rum punch and coconuts. Okay, so there we go. We got that together, and y'all know I don't eat that much, so I'm full, baby. You, you gonna what you got next? Um, I'm still eating on my steak, y'all. So hold on. She's still fucking up the steak, and look, I'm about to look. I know y'all want to try this banana pudding. Oh, we tried the banana pudding. I am going to go for the blue velvet cupcakes. This stay good. Just they eat shit too. Yes, we're gonna go for the blue velvet cupcakes. Here we go. Right here. All right, here we go. 
Yummy. I, this one, we're gonna look at Trick Daddy tonight. Oh, look at that. Got some cream cheese and look at how blue and fluorescent that is. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. Mm. Okay. All right, Trick Daddy. All right. You can put your foot in these. Okay. Even though they said you want now. Okay, where you at? You try, baby? Next time, you better be there. Next time, you better be Not there. Yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a lot of sugar for me, so. And I'm pre diabetic. <laughs> she lies. She, you're running her family. My mama diabetic. <laughs> but you do got to watch out. So, Shout out, Amy. So, we're about to go in a minute, but I want to talk about what's my favorite out of everything. And I'm going to say that that is the fried fish. Really? Yes. Oh, the fish? The fried fish and the greens. The steak my was favorite. my favorite. The steak was your favorite? Mm -hmm. The steak was real juicy and good. Okay. What else did you like? Mm, well, her. Really? I mm -hmm. like I like the steak. I like the, this rice and pea, this rice and shrimp. Ain't, you ain't put no shrimp in yours or you ate the shrimp out? No, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't had no shrimp. Oh, they had the shrimp with ours, okay? This rice is good. This rice good. Okay, trick. Okay, trick. <laughs> <laughs> And the ribs, they taste like pork chops to me, but more fattier. So, if you guys don't like the fat part of the pork chop, they don't get the fried ribs. Because when you when you grill ribs, it renders the fat off of it. But when you fry it, it keeps all that fat in there. So, it's good, but it's a bit greasy and fatty for me. But the banana pudding is really good. It has a really texture. So, if y'all come to Sunday's Eatery in Miami, Florida, Trick Daddy's Restaurant, come and try the banana pudding and um yeah that's it Good we night. are done for the day and let's get a let's get a um a, a, a thumbnail man i just whoop. okay we can do a thumbnail like that <laughs> yeah here mama come on do one one more okay Bye, guys. Bye. Right. See ya.